Coming up on this week's edition of the Trojan Football Report, we'll look at last week's 48-10 loss at UAB with Troy head football coach Larry Blakeney. Highlights plus post-game player commentary. We'll look at our Trojan Top 5, the Top 5 Plays of the Week, and we'll look ahead towards this weekend's matchup at Veterans Memorial Stadium against the Duke Blue Devils. All that plus more coming up on this week's edition of the Trojan Football Report. Welcome into the Trojan Football Report. I'm Barry McKnight with Troy head football coach Larry Blakeney. Trojans opened up the season. A lot of anticipation, a lot of excitement as the Trojans went on the road to Legion Field to take on the UAB Blazers. Blazers win at 48 to 10, coach, and they, they look like a pretty good football team to me. Well, you know, uh, they are a good football team. They're a well-coached football team. I alluded to the to the change in coaching and uh, staff people and and the people I knew on the staff and and uh, you know they've done a great job in a in a short transition uh, and uh, they've they've turned uh, UAB uh, into a, into a situation where you you can't go in there half cock which I think we did and uh, of course we go in there also with a lot of young and first time players on offense and defense and special teams uh, our quarterbacks didn't didn't perform super but they didn't beat us and uh, our defense you know a lot of little things alignments checks uh, missed assignments and uh, those type things are what what got us where we got to uh, in the game uh, against UAB uh, again you know you always if you're smart you got and I'm not very smart but I, I'm smart enough to know that you you need to give credit where credit's due and UAB gets it all. If you look at the way your team prepared for this game in fall camp, I know you were confident. I know I know you knew that the level of preparation, you felt the level of preparation was 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 good, coach. Sure, I you know, you uh you can uh, we don't we don't, we're not second guessing preparation, you know, we're you know, might we're looking at things we can do. We're looking at players that played well, we're looking at players that maybe didn't play so well. And uh, the quarterback situation is not going to change much, you know, because we got we got a couple of guys we think are good enough, and they've proven that in camp. At times, they proved it during the game, and uh, we've got to uh, find the things that they can do. They miss some pre-snap stuff. They miss some reads after the ball got to their hands, and uh, you know, maybe a little bit too deliberate moving around. And uh, but uh, you know, we got a chance with those guys to to be a lot better, in my opinion. Captains for the game for Troy were Kari Franklin and Terrence Jones and Mark Wilson and Tyler Roberts, and I thought it was a, a very nice commemoration, a very nice touch to bring out Jadarius Garner's jersey out there to help represent this team and his and to commemorate his passing back in January. Well, I mean, I've seen uh, a couple of letters from uh, G-Man's grandmother, and and uh, y you know the, the it's it's a sad. Uh, thing that happened and uh, happened to not only him and their family but to the Trojan family and our guys all loved him and, and I, I, I promise you this it, I knew why after I went to the funeral because everybody in, in uh, that part of Mississippi loved that young man too so it's a tragic event it's one we got to deal with and he, he's, he'll always be a remembered part of the Trojan family. Very nice commemoration for, uh, for him and the impact he had on a lot of people as the Trojans got out there for the for the opening coin toss and the opening kickoff, Coach Blakeney and I will take a look, as will you, at our first half highlights. Like he's a gamer, but you got to think that the nerves are there early. Right away, a little toss end around and some nifty running past the 40, 45 open field for Worthy. Worthy in the UAB territory and finally shoved out of bounds at around the 30 yard line and then multiple flags coming down at the tail end of the play.
Silver out of the gun. Hands off left side. That's Burks. Burks trying to turn the corner. He does. Five plowing ahead near the sideline. He stepped out of bounds. He was trying to tightrope it. Looked like he's out around the three. At second down and goal. Silver's out of the gun. Hands off. There's Chun again plowing ahead. And that time there's no doubt about it. An easy path to the end zone. Troy dominating the line of scrimmage on the opening drive. On play action, Clements running for daylight, can't find much, picks up a couple, but T.J. Fuller was in hot pursuit. But I think they've got to open it up and not be so conservative. Five in the pattern, and there's a wide open man at midfield, caught at the 40, and tripping over his own feet was Quisenberry. Yeah, it sure is. I'm interested to hear what those guys have to say about it because there's been a lot going on, and it's a fluid situation still going on out there. Howard gets the carry, a loss on the play. Tyler Roberts. They'll go misdirection here and a gaping hole on the left side down to the 32 yard line. Perfect snap and hold. Kick is on the way and it is good. Ryan Kay atoning for the miss from short range. Booms one from 47. Back again on the Trojan Football Report. You saw the first half highlights. Troy down 24 to 10. Despite a good start from your club, UAB came back and, and established the lead relatively quickly, a turnover in the first half as well. Interested in the mindset, Chris Blackshear on the sidelines on the radio broadcast said that you had a, you had a pretty good message at halftime. Well, uh, you know, we, uh, we were not out of the game. And, uh, you know, the, the, they were going to be very deliberate. A lot of formations, a lot of motion, a lot of quarterback counter, and a lot of fake, fake counter or a fake run, a little short pass. He's not a great passer down the field, so we knew that if we could, if we could bring our own offense to the party, you know that we, we'd have a chance maybe to get back in it. Certainly didn't turn out that way. UAB again uh, was able to control the tempo and, uh, and, uh, and the time and the score. As you saw at the end of the first half highlights, Ryan Kay gets a field goal at the horn in the first half to give you guys some momentum heading into the second half. Now Ryan, Ryan played uh, pretty well. Uh, you know, he, he, uh, had a, he had a very good uh, punt average and had a couple of great rugby kicks and missed one field goal that would have given us a, a, a little bit of juice earlier in the half maybe, but he sure made one when we needed but to going in at halftime to, to take it to 10 points for us. You'll notice Troy was able to force a couple of turnovers early in the second half. We'll take a look at those highlights, plus a lot more, plus some post-game player reaction in the locker room following the game. All that on our second half highlights. They fake it to Howard. They go to Nelson. Nelson with a little convoy. Nelson breaks free at midfield. Look out, and he stumbles inside the 30. Ball comes out, still loose, and Troy pounces on it. Jacquez Young knocked it out, and the Trojans will have it at the 10. Larry Blakeney's first rodeo, 24th season with the Troy program. Knows how to make halftime adjustments. In the flat, gets the blocking, and that'll be good for a first down. B.J. Chitty, the senior by way of Dothan, Alabama. Yep. You know, caliber, so a lot of praise for that young man. He might be. Long ball. This pit is short and picked off at the 25. Intended for Howard. Kitchens grabs it. Kitchens looking for more daylight and finally stopped inside UAB territory. Another break for the Trojans here in this third quarter. A 
Another punt for Ryan Kay, who does double duty for the Troy kicking unit. Bounces it inside the 10. Tough field position, tough go of it for about a decade here in Birmingham. Clements on the carry, not much there. It'll set up a third down and long, another stop. I mean, they've completely transformed these young men the way that they're playing today. Silvers completes it at the 35 and down to midfield. KD Edenfield, his second grab of the game. I really think keep up the intensity. You know? That's part of my fault. Should have kept on getting the offensive line down, you know, getting set up faster. That's on me. I feel like we uh, started off pretty good, but it hit a point in the game where you could tell we kind of lost our composure a little bit, and we were trying our best to get it back. But with so many young guys, it's kind of hard to just get them up and going and get them to understand that the way you react to things on the sideline, that people feed off that energy. So that's, I think, a big thing we need to work on this week. Give them the buy in at all costs. Uh, when I promise you, I'm going to make sure they don't lay down and give away this season because this is my last year and I haven't seen a bowl game yet. So I promise we got, we're going to change it this week because uh, we're not standing for it this year. I know we had a lot of, a lot of uh, misfits, you know, that's small, small things. And they was coming out in um, formations that, you know, we weren't really used to seeing. But uh, we had a hard time adjusting to it. And uh, they got us. And, you know, we came out in some blitzes. And uh, they capitalized on it. Of course we did. Uh, you know, we went into halftime. We uh, didn't let the score affect us, and um, you know we came out with the with the forced fumble. You know we just wanted to give our offense as much, you know, as many chances as we could, but um, we still can't blame it on them because if they don't score, uh, you know, if UAB don't don't score, they don't win. Back again on the Trojan Football Report. Now a special feature we take a great deal of pride in. The top five plays from Troy's game at UAB. We called him the Trojan Top Five, and here they are. Perfect snap and hold. Kick is on the way, and it is good. Ryan Kay atoning for the miss from short range. Booms one from 47. They fake it to Howard. They go to Nelson. Nelson with a little convoy. Nelson breaks free at midfield. Look out. And he stumbles inside the 30. Ball comes out. Still loose. And Troy pounces on it. Jacquez Young knocked it out, and the Trojans will have it at the 10. Yep. You know, caliber, so a lot of praise for that young man. He might be. Long ball. This pit is short and picked off at the 25. Intended for Howard. Kitchens grabs it. Kitchens looking for more daylight and finally stopped inside UAB territory. Another break for the Trojans here in this third quarter. Like he's a gamer, but you got to think that the nerves are there early. Right away, a little toss end around and some nifty running past the 40, 45 open field for Worthy. Worthy in the UAB territory and finally shoved out of bounds at around the 30 yard line and then multiple flags coming down at the tail end of the play. Second down and goal. Silver's out of the gun. Hands off. There's Chun again plowing ahead and that time there's no doubt about it. An easy path to the end zone. Troy dominating the line of scrimmage on the opening drive. So the Trojans fall in the opener on the road at UAB. Here on the Trojan Football Report, we are really looking forward to the home opener at Veterans Memorial Stadium coming up on Saturday. We anticipate a big crowd, six o'clock start time. We also anticipate, Coach, pretty good football team coming in in the Duke Blue Devils. Well, they're as good as there is really in the ACC. And uh, David Cutcliffe's one of the best football coaches and one of the best people in our business. And uh, you know, he, uh, he's going to have his team ready. They scored 52 or three points uh, against Elon. And, uh, you know, they got their quarterback from, uh, that didn't play against us back last from last year. 
and he is he's prolific and he got uh, you know they've got a good football team they've lost a couple of guys in preseason but they uh, you know uh, they're they're going to be a good team and one that we'll have to play our uh, air free and play as hard as we can play and and see what happens. I always try to stay away from cliches as much as I can, but there's a cliche out there that a team improves more between week one <laughs> and week two. Looking at what your club is going to be focusing on leading into the Duke game, what jumps out at you? Well, you know, whatever our packages are for our quarterbacks, got, those are going to be very important. And we got to we got to decorate the field with people that make plays for them and uh, help them along the way, including the offensive line and including pass protection and, and rushing the football. On defense we got to learn how to get we got to narrow our, our plan for Duke and we've got to uh, we've got to get our guys lined up and get 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 in the proper places to play uh, and if something changes after we get lined up we got to be able to adjust with a young football team like you have facing some adversity in week number one is there a psychological message that you that you bring to them a psychological angle well you, you know I always say that you, you if you win you can coach them better but I but I, I believe in this particular case, you know, with Duke coming to town and losing to UAB like we did, that we'll, we'll have their attention. And uh, I think they'll listen and try to, try to uh, get better and execute what we're coaching. And, uh, you know, this is not a very, it's not really a complicated game. You, you got to be in the right place on defense. You got to execute on offense. You got to take care of business in the special teams. And we did a pretty good job in the special teams this week. but. But, uh, you know, in the other areas, we got a ways to go. Well, the Trojans and the Duke Blue Devils open up the 2014 home schedule for Troy at Veterans Memorial Stadium this Saturday, September 6th at 6 o'clock. It's an ESPN3 telecast. On the radio, our broadcast begins at 4 o'clock. Get your tickets. There's still a few that remain by calling 1-877-878-WINS or going online at troytrojans.com or stopping by the ticket office on campus. Coach, we appreciate the time and we Thank look for better things. Thank That's the head coach of the Troy Trojans, Larry Blake. We hope you get a chance to join us next time when we bring you another edition of the Trojan Football Report.